As we get to the last of Jesus' six exegeses from Torah on the greater righteous, we land in what is probably the most well-known, but also one of the ones we probably fail to implement the most. So this is the Sermon on the Mount and loving your enemies. As we get to Jesus' final exegesis of Torah and the greater righteousness, we come across one of his most famous teachings. And it's rooted in a commandment that we're all very familiar with. Love thy neighbor from Leviticus. Interestingly, though, Jesus also accompanies it with a piece of text that we can't really find in the Old Testament. Because he says, love thy neighbor and hate your enemies. There's nowhere in the Old Testament where it directly says, hate your enemies. There's several stories and texts where it seems to be implied that there's kind of a building up of hatred against others. Um, and it's almost asked of by the leaders of Israel. Uh, but we never really see it in a command form from God. So that's a little bit perplexing. But nevertheless, Jesus takes this and he pushes it all aside. He says, just love your neighbor, but I want you to love your enemies. And this is where there would normally be a big conversation about who are your enemies, what are they? I just want you to understand this really simply. When Jesus says enemies, he means everybody you don't like. Everybody who's not your friend. You still have to love them. There is nobody who is exempt from your loving. And I think sometimes we miss the forcefulness of Jesus in this because we spend so much time dancing around um, trying to see if we can make it say something a little different, something that's a little easier for us to stomach. Oh, because let's face it, the reality of love your enemies, that is amazingly brutal and heavy and difficult. But what I really want to focus on here is the sheer force with which Jesus drives this point home. And he starts off by giving a reason. The reason, so that you may be children of the Father in heaven. So his whole command about loving your enemies is rooted in this identity of being children of the Father. For Jesus, this is one of those things. If you are children of the Father in heaven, you love your enemies. It's a, a requirement. You know, all the way through these exegeses, we've been looking at what is this greater righteousness that's required to come into the kingdom, to be a part of the kingdom. What is that virtue vision we're trying to push towards and achieve and always be moving towards the wholeness completeness if you want to be whole and complete in God Jesus says if you want to own that identity part of that is loving your enemies and he keeps on hammering on it with a series of rhetorical questions one after the other they go like this for if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Here Jesus makes a really hard-hitting point about loving your enemies. He says, look, there are these people you don't like, tax collectors. Tax collectors were the extensions of the Roman Empire. Um, they were deceitful. They would take people's money beyond what they needed to take to supply back to Rome. But they were the symbol of imperial authority oppressing the people. He says, did you not know that even these symbols of imperial oppression love their friends and the people that love them back? And then he pulls out another example, a bigger example, the Gentiles, the non-Jews. You don't know these people that are not the children of God, these people that are not his chosen race. They're all capable of loving the people that love them. Human beings are really good at loving people who love us back. Jesus says, if they do this, how on earth does you being a child of God mark you out as any different?
if that's what you do. It says, if you want to be known as children of God, if you want to be seen as different, you have to be different. You have to love even those people other people can't love. Love those who hurt you. Love those who've oppressed you. Love those who've been violent towards you. Love those who have injured you. Love those of different opinion to you. Love those who want nothing to do with you. Love those that hate you. You see, everybody else is capable of loving their friends. But Jesus says it is a mark of the children of God that they can love even their enemies. That is the force with which Jesus drives this point home. Brutally heavy. If you want to be a child of God, if you want to own that as your identity, this is the righteousness you must pursue. A wholeness and completeness that is so rooted in love, it cares for everybody, it loves everybody, it wants to achieve the highest for everybody, even when it's not reciprocated. After all, once again, that is what God has done. God has stepped down and redeemed a humanity that wanted nothing to do with him. He went out and loved and sought the highest and the greatest and the most beautiful for creatures that ultimately had walked away from him and had become his enemies. So the greater righteousness, wholeness, completeness cannot be until we learn to imitate that love of God that seeks the highest and the best for everyone.